Welcome to part three of our four-part series on e-commerce checkout best practices. I'm Nathan with Snipcart, and in part one of this series, we went over what every shopping cart needs at the most basic level. Then, in part two, we covered topics including guest checkout, the checkout flow for both digital and physical products, what information you should be asking for in the checkout process, and leveraging technology to make the best user experience possible. If you haven't seen those videos yet, I definitely recommend checking them out. In part three, we'll be looking at a few more characteristics of the optimized cart, like showing that your payment and shipping methods are secure, decluttering your cart design, using visual cues to guide customers to checkout, and following up with an order confirmation. After watching this video, you'll be more aware of what could be improved in your own checkout flow to minimize cart abandonment and increase revenue. The first thing to recognize is that online shopping is one of the most vulnerable transactions from a consumer's point of view. Think about it. When you go to a physical location to buy something, you place things in your cart, hand them to the cashier, they tell you how much it costs, you give them the money, and then you take your item. Both you and the cashier have seemingly equal control over the transaction because you're there together. If you go to a restaurant, the merchant takes all the risk because they actually give you the product, the food, before you pay. And if it turns out you can't pay, it's too late for the merchant because you can't return the product in the form that they gave it to you. Hence why anyone who's ever worked in the restaurant industry has some horror story about dine and dashers. In this scenario, the customer assumes less financial risk than the merchant. Online shopping, however, is the exact opposite. The client assumes 100% of the risk because they are paying for an item they will not immediately have. This is less true with digital products, but still takes a leap of faith that after payment the software will be A, instantly available, and B, actually work. But this is an incredibly vulnerable feeling and is one of the reasons why it's important to show your customers that your website is totally 100% secure. So let's start with the site itself. Nowadays, it's important to make sure that your site is secure by an SSL certificate, especially in e-commerce. You've probably seen a site with HTTP versus a site with HTTPS. Well, when your site becomes certified, it gets that S after the HTTP to let users know your site is secure. Now it's important to keep this in mind because according to AnnexCloud.com, 35% of potential customers will actually abandon a site if it doesn't have a security badge of some type. So to understand more about why an HTTPS connection is so important, check out Faith and Vincent's in-depth discussion on the subject with Google AdSense. It's linked in the video description below and is an excellent resource on this topic. Next, you'll want to remind users that not only is your website safe, but that their payment method is secure. Using some icon that demonstrates their information is secure is highly recommended, the standard symbol being a lock, and cannot be overemphasized. Now, if you want to go the extra mile, you can provide a link of how their information is secure. For example, you'll see that Snipcart's shopping cart says Secured by Snipcart next to the lock icon. Users can then click on the link to be taken to the following site. This resource is a detailed explanation of how the customer's payment will be secured. The bottom line is that demonstrating financial security is important to your clients because according to the Baymart Institute, 17% of abandoned carts were due to the fact that the client couldn't trust a website with their credit card information. That's nearly one in every five of your clients. Add that with the 35% who will leave your site because it doesn't appear secure, and you're looking at a lot of revenue left on the table. In this series, we've already spoken about not asking for unnecessary information at checkout, but there is another way you could be cluttering your cart design. Upsells with related products. You're probably already familiar with this concept. It's like the last time you went on Amazon and saw the message customers who bought this item also bought. So for example, last month I was looking at a biography on Ulysses S. Grant and I had the following suggestions. 
These are the types of suggestions that I mean when I say upsells and related products. This is an intriguing problem for merchants because, on the one hand, upsells with related products are, in theory, a great way to add value to the client's shopping experience while increasing profits. The downside, however, is that every option you give your client to click away from checkout increases the risk they will never make it to payment. Which, by the way, I ended up not buying that biography I was looking at because I only wanted one book and started looking through all of the options they recommended. In the end, I bought something totally different via Kindle at a much lower price. Unfortunately, whether you should or should not suggest related products is a topic that doesn't have a very clear answer. Though we at Snipcart tend to lean against suggesting related products in your cart, we also understand that it makes sense for some businesses to try it. So here's some helpful advice in case you do decide to move forward with related product suggestions. Verify that all related products displayed in the checkout flow are actually relevant to the product in the cart. For example, you'll see in this picture someone is buying a telescope. If that's the case, the related products here wouldn't fit with the product being purchased. So if you do decide to recommend products at checkout, which again is something you should consider and then verify with an A-B split test, you'd want the suggestions to match the product like so. These suggested items make much more sense as they are related to the same theme, space. For some businesses, suggesting products in the shopping cart makes a lot of sense and a lot of added revenue. For others, it distracts the customers and increases cart abandonment. You may also want to consider possibly having suggested products on the actual product page so that by the time they're in your checkout flow, there are no distractions that could possibly lead them away. But at the end of the day, the best advice is when it comes to upsells, ask yourself whether it makes business sense to add this feature to your cart and then, and I can't stress this enough, test it for a few months before making a final decision. If you think that upselling related products would be valuable, add the feature to your cart, track both sales and cart abandonment rates, then reassess after a few months. Using visual cues to guide your customers through to checkout. Your cart design should have one goal. Keep your clients focused on the next required step when their current field input is validated. In other words, at no point should your customers ask themselves, okay, so what do I do now? Or, wait, why isn't this working? Everything should be clear, easy to understand, and should flow seamlessly from cart to order confirmation. Here are some tips to make sure this happens. Use a single column layout. First, single column layouts make it easier to have a mobile first design. They also work much better on smaller screens, so it's less work for you in the long run. Plus, your checkout flow shouldn't be so long that it requires a lot of scrolling on the desktop, so needing two columns is usually a sign that you're asking for too much information somewhere in the checkout flow. Two, use image logos to indicate what information is being asked for. Three, Use visual constraints. Ask yourself, can some fields be shortened or merged together? For instance, a zip field shouldn't be as long as an address field. These design hints will help your users better understand what's expected of them. 4. Never hide field labels. Either transition them out of the input field once the user starts typing, or better yet, keep them out of the input field altogether. 5. Use masks instead of placeholders when possible. A common example of this would be having DDMMYYY for date, month, year. A phone number field showing the country code, followed by two parentheses to show you also need the area code. Or expiration dates asking for both the month and year with MMYY. Six. Use inline validation with real-time feedback immediately after your customer finishes inputting their information. This can be done with a little green check mark that lets users know they filled out the field correctly. 
7. Be clear in your error messages. What did the user do wrong and what corrected information do they need to input? One of the last steps requiring your attention, especially to the level of detail that you might not have looked at so far, is the confirmation after purchase. Once the client has made it through to checkout, you should always follow up with a short confirmation message to let them know that their order has been completed or has failed to go through for some reason. I like to relate this back to when you were a kid and you gave someone a note that said, do you like me, with a box that they could check yes or no. The worst response wasn't actually no. It was no response at all. So be sure that when their order goes through, you provide them with a small message that includes the status of their order, the total price they paid, including a breakdown of taxes, shipping fees, and discounts, when they can expect their product for items being shipped, and how they can access their product for digital items and subscriptions. Here's a bit of related advice that is one step further than the actual checkout flow. It's a good practice to send a confirmation email to customers with similar information as the confirmation message. Following up with an immediate email can be good in cases where page loads make it unclear whether an order actually went through. For example, this happened to me when I was using TransferWise just last week. I made the transfer, but after clicking Confirm Transfer, the page continued loading and no confirmation message popped up. However, from past experience, I know that TransferWise sends an email when successful transfers go through, so after a few minutes, I knew that I had to reload the page and start over. Again, it is definitely good to have a confirmation order after payment in the checkout flow, but sending an immediate confirmation update via email or SMS is additional peace of mind for your clients. Thank you so much for watching, and stay tuned for part 4, where I'll be taking you through a live run of Snipcart's V3 cart to show what we believe the ideal cart flow should look like. Plus, at the end of that video, we'll give you a checklist to run a shopping cart audit on your own cart to make sure that you're keeping cart abandonment rates as low as possible. You can stay up to date on this video series in a few ways. First, you'll want to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Then feel free to follow us on Twitter under the handle at Snipcart or by following me personally at NatePDThompson. Or you can always skip ahead by reading the post that inspired this video series, Optimize Your E-Commerce Checkout Flow for 2019, which is linked in the video description. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to share it with people you think would find it valuable, or let us know in the comment section below. We love hearing from you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again in part four.